Hi Virgo! Welcome to the October horoscope, the Libra season tarot scope. Um, Libra season as the sign after yours is very much to do with how we feel about our own value, about our own worth. It is establishing your relationship between what you're willing to put prices on and your own internal sense of confidence. So your time, charging for your time, um, investing emotionally in people that take your time, you know, things like that. It's not all to do about money. It's a lot to do about money. <laughs> Neighbor season is very much for you about money in, in, a, in a more superficial way. Of astrology but whenever it is the second house season and it is such a wonderful time to be making more money in your life Virgo it is also a time to reflect on what it is that you feel your own service is worth as a service sign you have more experience than anybody else in offering something particularly in work particularly in career you offer a lot and a lot of the time as a mercurial sign being ruled by Mercury, what you offer is very much in here. It's very um, logical, it's analytical, it is able to see the structures in things that other people simply can't understand. The people that are more emotionally based oftentimes are the people that need Virgos the most, yet fear the most because you're what is perceived as criticism but is really act of service love and is so oftentimes misconstrued as being just criticism. You know, people need that even if they don't always say thanks for it. So maybe consider that you should be putting the price on your service, not anybody else. And I know that you like to do a good job and I know that that's your main focus on things. But Libra season is also all about balance and about what we can give and what we can receive in return. It's 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 an exchange, it's a transaction in many ways, but this season is actually more to do about knowing your value where you are and assessing it and making sure that you're receiving something back for what you put in. Now we also have Mercury, your ruler, in Scorpio and we have Venus in Scorpio, both ahead of Scorpio season itself, which for you is all about the voice, what you say, what you mean, how you communicate. Venus being there means that if you want to ask for a raise, it's actually quite a good time. It's a very good time. The Hierophant and the Empress. Taurus energy. Could be a very substantial number of Taurus people in your life, or you could be dealing with a Taurus straight off the bat. You're willing to commit to something that will show growth be it be it something incredibly long lasting something that is your prime focus in libra season is actually going to grow because the empress is also um libra so you've committed to something but it's going to it's going to require a change in perspective possibly faith in something that you cannot see possibly re-examining your belief systems and why they lead you down a particular path, why they lead you to a particular conclusion. And quite simply, if you're dealing with a Taurus person or a Libra person, you're just going to have to wait and see. The Hierophant is all about those structures, those religious structures. The trickling down of advice, of wisdom, of the way it should be from the top. And you're willing to question now where those pieces of information are actually coming from and how important they really are. For a lot of you Virgos, you're willing to create something and commit to it in Libra season. You're becoming very aware of your power, very aware of your commitment, and you're, you're contemplating, maybe I could do better here. Oh, Ten of Swords, Ten of Cups. You're ready for change, but you're also kind of scared of it. You think you could be happier elsewhere, but you also fear ending. You also fear 
betrayal, you also fear disappointing people more so than anything. But what about you? What about your happiness, Virgo? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the full moon on the 13th is in the sign of Aries. Emperor. And for you, Virgo, this is your eighth house which is a lot to do with joint financial ventures. It's to do with death. It's to do with rebirth. It is to do with transformation. It is to do with taxes. All the stuff that people fear <laughs> and yet are the most inevitable. There's the, uh, the quote that the only thing that is certain in life is death and taxes. And this Aries full moon is going to make you very aware, Virgo, of how precious your time actually is and that's not to say anybody's going to just cease or anything like that that's not the point of the Aries full moon the point of the Aries full moon is to make you very aware of where your deepest and most important emotions actually lie even if they don't make any sense so the six of swords and the five of cups and the page of wands when it comes to career there is this back and forth consideration of your own role of where you are what you're doing if you're fulfilling your dreams the six of swords a lot of the time represents when we're willing to move past the trouble to stay in in a peaceful state the five of cups however is more when we are looking at the glass half empty rather than glass half full and you must not make a decision based on that mentality you must not make a decision based on what you do not like the decision must be fueled by what you want not what you don't want. Knowing what you don't want is a great catalyst for making changes, but the focus, if you want a positive result, should be going after what it is that you do want. With the Page of Wands, if that is your mentality, Virgo, you will be successful. So, the Aries full moon is making very positive, very positive, um, aspects to Jupiter which is in fellow fire sign Sagittarius. Now it's also making very tricky square energy to Pluto which is in Capricorn which is your fifth house five of swords and the two of swords here. So if you are considering a romance where you feel as though you <laughs> you feel as though the other person doesn't quite see you or doesn't hear you. Romantically, if that is the case, if you're dealing with someone where you feel like you're undervalued, big theme of this month, I think Pluto is going to give you that shift to let it go. It's not a competition. It's not a war. It should be a flow of energy between two people. It shouldn't be getting you up in knots. The Aries full moon is very revealing in that way. It's also very transformational. It may also, through conflict, transform a tumultuous relationship into something more equal. Six of Pentacles. Generous. Conflict may lead to generosity. War may lead to negotiation. Nine of Cups may also lead to wish fulfillment. Pretty impressive. Your skills in negotiation are pretty impressive. You are able to articulate your points, you're able to put them forward, and you're going to get what you want from it. Provided you're leading yourself with what it is that you actually desire. Not what you don't desire. We're seeing a pattern here. We're seeing a pattern. Ah. Ah, okay. Judgment and the Ace of Cups. It's quite a paradoxical energy. Ace of Cups is all about new beginnings. It's all about new emotional investments, new emotional feelings. Your cup running over with positive emotion, positive excitement. As we move towards Scorpio season on the 23rd of October, you will find that you're very, very enthusiastic and emotionally invested in something new or something that was old and has come around again. A big theme 
for most of the signs because Mercury goes retrograde a few days after, I think about a week into Scorpio season, Mercury goes retrograde, Mercury being your ruler. Okay, so for many of you, reconnecting with the past is a big possibility. Hearing from an ex, hearing from an old friend, hearing from an old job, deciding to leave your old job and then deciding you don't want to leave your old job. It's anyone's guess, really. But with Judgment and the Ace of Cups, Virgo, if you're dealing with a Scorpio person or a water sign, a Pisces or a Cancer, there's a big emotional decision there, but I think it's positive. Okay? I think it's positive. You making a judgment call, making a big decision, making a grandiose statement of what you want, Virgo, leads you to great fulfillment. Even if the direction that you're going to get there seems confusing, seems troubling, it's actually leading you towards something quite great, something that you're going to want to pursue. Even if, with the Five of Swords and the Two of Swords, you wish you could turn around the way that somebody sees you, if they're really not seeing you for who you are and you feel the energy is quite simply incompatible, particularly if it's a fire sign, your best avenue may be leaving that to make space for something new and more fulfilling. That's just the way it goes. But I do think, Virgo, that for most of you, your powers of persuasion and your powers of communication are so very, very powerful that you actually get what you want just by being sure of what it is that you actually deserve. There is nothing more appealing to humans than something that is quite hard to come by. That's just the way we work. Easy come, easy go. Given for free, probably not as valued, whether as when you save and you invest in something and it takes time and it takes effort and it takes money and it takes um, all kinds of things. You treat it better, you know? And Jupiter being in your fourth house, all these different gifts that could show up at, you, at your door, none of it means anything if you're not using that sharp mind of yours that is so very smart to get it. And even then, as a Virgo, you'll probably question why you got it and somebody else didn't. Because you guys are humble like that. Lakshmi. Bright future, stop worrying, everything is going to be fine. Have you ever told a Virgo to stop worrying? Has anyone ever told you to stop worrying? Because I've, if I said to you a Virgo, in my life, <laughs> stop worrying. It is kind of like telling a dog to meow. You know what I mean? Stop worrying, everything's going to be fine. Kuan Yin, compassion. Release judgment about yourself and others and focus on the love and light that is within everyone. Judgment is a big energy here as we lead to Scorpio season. Judge lest not ye be judged. Try, even though I know that when you give advice and you give critique and you give your opinion, Virgo, it is actually because you care. It is your act of service. It's just how your mind operates. It's what gifts you have to give. And not everybody appreciates them because people are sensitive and people are proud and people are sometimes ego-driven. Let them be that way. Let them, if they don't want to take your advice, let them do what they have to do. Because that is who they are. And you know that they could be better if they did this. And you know that they would be better off if they did that. But. They will do what they will do. You choose how you react to it. Now I'm going to draw an animal card for Virgos and see what we get. Ooh, ooh, hummingbird and the golden egg. That's pretty impressive. Golden egg is a really, really important card. The hummingbird, this came out for Libra as well. The hummingbird is very much to do with using your voice, using your sense of expression. 
If you're a singer, it is time to sing. It is basically knowing that even, even if people don't hear you the way you want them to, you still have your voice and it still matters. Just because some people can't hear your song or don't sing from the hy same hymn sheet doesn't mean you should stop singing. Okay, the golden egg. You have a very, very, very bright idea as we move into Scorpio season. Again, all about the voice, all about the throat chakra. Um, if you're having throat troubles, um, it's a lot of the time linked to your throat chakra being blocked, not being able to express yourself authentically, um, feeling like you can't articulate yourself the way that you want to, even if you have... Um, the lingo of a dictionary you know you can use the most fancy words in the book but if you can't get the right word to explain what you want to say Virgo you get very frustrated and that's what causes blockage you can say something simple and still be impressive because it will be simple to you it might not be simple to everybody else the golden egg means you have a gift you have something important you are starting to understand a side of yourself that for a long time you have not been acknowledging. That golden egg is representative of understanding your value, understanding your worth, understanding your importance and rolling with that. Make your decisions based on what you want and you will not go far wrong. Now in the extended reading we're going to go into each card individually. We draw cards for each card and I think with the Ten of Cups this full moon is going to be so so interesting especially for those of you looking for love because with Saturn and Pluto now direct in your romantic sector. There's a there's a big sense of fate and destiny and I feel that one ending could lead to an incredible beginning with many Virgos but I also think that if you're dealing with an Aries or a Leo or a Sagittarius there's big changes there. Similarly if it's a Taurus or a Libra big changes there and Pisces and Scorpio. But particularly Taurus, that Hierophant is very, very, very supportive of you. For that to be the first card out of the deck, along with the Empress, very supportive. You have knowledge, you have wisdom that other people would pay handsomely for, that other people need. You're going to be asked for it. Speak. Love you, Virgo. Join me in the extended listed below. And if you're not joining me there, I will see you in the next set of readings. Bye, Virgo.